targets were military bases and outposts, as well as the militarized Israeli settlements along the frontier with Gaza, which by their very nature blurred the distinction between military and civilian targets and act as human shields for the Israeli military. Indeed, one of the Gaza frontier settlements, Magen, is literally the Hebrew word for shield. Hamas says that it aimed to kill or capture Israeli soldiers. To quote our narrative, this document you can see on the screen here, which was recently released by Hamas. Quote, Operation Al-Aqsa Flood on October 7 targeted Israeli military sites and sought to arrest the enemy soldiers to put pressure on the Israeli authorities to release the thousands of Palestinians held in Israeli jails through a prisoner exchange deal. Therefore, the operation focused on destroying the Israeli army's Gaza division, the Israeli military sites stationed near the Israeli settlements around Gaza. End of quote. Hamas's military assault was well planned and very precisely executed. And the Bergman Zitun article provides a large amount of new evidence confirming this. Hundreds of Israeli soldiers were killed and about 240 Israelis were captured, including dozens of soldiers. Civilians were also taken prisoner, but Hamas offered to release them right away and actually did release them as soon as it was physically possible to do so during the week long pause in fighting in November. The 7th of October was an unprecedented military success for the Palestinian resistance. To quote the words of a very senior Israeli military officer in the Bergman and Zetoun article, the Gaza division was overpowered. The journalist sources watched the day unfold from the Israeli military's supreme military uh, command position, which is an underground bunker deep below Tel Aviv, known as the pit. The journalists recount that, quote, there was an almost total shock and such words Ha, quote, had not been heard since the Yom Kippur War of October 1973. In fact, the pit was almost totally in the dark. They had no clue about the scale of what was happening on the ground. According to Bergman and Zetun, quote, they turned to television and to social media feeds, to Telegram, primarily to Hamas channels. End of quote. The reason for this intelligence failure was quite simple. Hamas had skillfully targeted the communications infrastructure. Another quote, a, plen a preliminary investigation held in the last few days about the communication capacity of the Gaza division exposed the fact that some 40% of the communication sites, such as towers with relay antennas, that the telecommunications department had deployed in recent years near the Gaza Strip border were destroyed by Hamas on the morning of the invasion. Soon after the first videos of the Israeli captives emerged at midday, Israel's top military headquarters issued the order to all units to carry out the Hannibal Directive, Israel's suicidal military doctrine. The article also confirms a lot of the Electronic Intifada's previous reporting since the 7th of October about that day. In November, we reported on Israeli air footage, as well as interviews with attack helicopter pilots, showing that they had been ordered to shoot at everything. That, that's a quote from an article, shoot at everything, moving between Israel's frontier settlements and Gaza. That Israeli article stated that, quote, in the first four hours, helicopters and fighter craft attacked about 300 targets, most in Israeli territory. And you can see the footage of it there. Now, Bergman and Zetun's new article uh, confirms this and actually expands on it, saying that by the end of the day, Drone Squadron 161 alone, quote, performed no fewer than 110 attacks on some 1,000 targets, most of which were inside Israel, end of quote. Uh, as we reported in English for the first time, Israeli news media last month showed footage of tank operators that you can see here, firing at Israeli homes inside a kibbutz during the battles with the Palestinian resistance on the 7th of October. This 
in turn confirmed our reports back in October about the testimony of Yasmin Parat, and we were the first to report on that in English. She was one of only two survivors of an Israeli attack on a home in Kibbutz Be'eri. And that building contained around a dozen uh, captives held by Palestinian fighters. And Porat told Israeli media that the Palestinians had treated them humanely. But she said that the Israeli army ended a standoff with the fighters by deliberately tank shelling the house, even though the captives were still present. And she and one other woman were the only survivors of that. Porat later elaborated that the casualties of the Israeli attack included this girl, 12-year-old Israeli captive, Liel Hatzroni. Now, Hatzroni's photo, um, you may have seen it, was later used in propaganda by Israeli officials who wrongly claimed she had been burnt alive by Hamas. Because she's Jewish, was what Naftali Bennett, the former Israeli prime minister, said. You can see him lying here in this tweet. Now, although it's being aggressively ignored by mainstream media in the West, who are even trying to punish independent journalists like us who report accurately on this, Israel's suicidal military doctrine is making waves inside Israeli society. We are killing our people, was how one family member of the captives pleaded. Families of the captives want to see their loved ones come home safely and are pushing for the Israeli government for that to happen by agreeing to a prisoner exchange deal with Hamas that would release all Palestinian prisoners in Israeli jails. Even Asa Kasher, the author of the Israeli army's so-called code of ethics, agrees with the families and is now calling for an immediate investigation of how the Hannibal Directive was used. But the reality seems to be that the Israeli government doesn't want the captives to come home alive, since the price of that would be a prisoner exchange deal to release the Palestinians. And that's why it has unleashed the Hannibal Directive. You can read more about all this in my article. And also remember that we've published the full text of the English translation of that Bergman Zetun article appended to my own piece. So you can read that. In